This is my small garden area where I grow flowers and vegetables. Today I'm going to show you how you can come up with an amazing idea that fits your lifestyle. I'm going to show you my garden, what I've done in this area, and how you can apply some of these ideas that I've had into your own space. We're going to go through 10 steps that are going to help you create your own garden oasis. Begin by really understanding what is it that you want and you need. For me, it was growing vegetables and flowers, but also creating a space that was easy to access for my mother, who's 91. I always think about why do I want the space to be in five years? I didn't want it to look like this. This is how it all started. The function of the space is very important, not only to growing, but how you feel. So make sure that you understand the goal that you have and incorporate a design that is visually calming and inviting. I love anything that has to do with food and flowers but i also have to think about what can i do daily i do have my job and i need to take care of the garden and it does require my time so make sure that you think about that how much do you realistically want to take care of and make sure that you design around that goal if you're someone that doesn't want to have to be growing vegetables and doing a bunch of maintenance, consider growing perennials. I incorporate both in my garden. I love perennials because I don't have to maintain them as much. Now it's time to find the right space. Starting with the sun. In the space that I had, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to grow vegetables and flowers, but sun is a real challenge in my zone. One, because I live in the Pacific Northwest, but also because the house is situated in a way that I get no sun until about April. And right now it's starting to go ahead and shift. So by October, I have no sun in my yard. So the best location I had ended up being on the corner of my home. And I will show you and plan where this is located. I got everything ready to show you how I sketched the design of my backyard. So this sketch is a quick and dirty sketch. I don't want this to be something pretty. I don't want you to feel intimidated. Just take every step that I do and apply it to your own backyard. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to put together an amazing design that works really well for you. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by finding where my fence is and I'm gonna draw a line that shows the perimeter of the property where I'm thinking of placing. Uh, the area of my garden beds and then the house the outline of the house because I want to think about what am I looking at what am I going to see when I look out the window right now I'm going to put also existing pieces like the pond I want to go next to the pond to get the nice noise of the waterfall and then you're going to do the different transitions of the space I have an arc there at the left and then my path that takes you across the space into where it will be a garden area to grow vegetables and flowers. The next big, big piece is that drainage piece that I need to account for and how, so I can figure out how I'm going to design around it. And then my trellis that takes you down to the secret garden. Everything that's surrounding this area is important for you to note it. What are the trees that are existing? I know I have a tree here. It doesn't grow too big. So that's a really good place to do it because it's not going to create shadows and not allow the sun to hit the garden bed. I also have a large patio and I'm counting for that. I want the view. I want whatever I see when I'm sitting down on the sofa to be really nice. I have all the pieces that I need to get started designing the garden. I'm going to note every single area that affects how I get introduced to the space. That's where the sofa is located. So I'm going to note it, the view from the sofa, what I want to look at that may determine how tall is the thing going to have to be on the background in order for me to see it. I'm going to mark the most important thing, which is the drain. That's going to impact everything that I do in this small area because I have to have it. It can't go anywhere. So I have to account. So make sure that you're accounting for any electrical, anything that you have in the space. I know I have my tree that also is going to impact what I do in there because it does create some shade, but I know that it's not going to grow really large. So I'm okay putting something next to it. Now let's talk about the sun and that's probably the most important thing you have to look at is where does the sun rise and where does it set? 
So the sun rises on the east and it sets on the west. For me, it rises on the right side of my patio and it settles on the left side of the patio. What this means is when you look at the sun rising, you have a fence that's five foot tall and it's gonna make shadows on the left side of that fence. So if I put a bed right next to it, I'm gonna have some shadows in the morning. I'm gonna also have them next to the house. But as the sun starts rising, it will go ahead and wash the whole backyard. I'm gonna start drawing. I know that I want a retaining wall because I want a space for pollinators. So I wanna grow flowers behind that retaining wall. I wanna possibly have some pots on the end of the pond to sort of soften that edge and be able to grow even more food on those pots. And then on the right side, I want a garden bed, but that garden bed, I think it needs to be really tall, not the normal 24 inch high. And then I have a lilac tree to the right of that, which will bring flowers. Now that I have that laid out, I know that it's important that I have three foot clear because my mother needs access. Plants grow outside of the bed, so I wanna make sure that she can get around those. So I'm gonna leave three feet on the right side and on the left side, I'm only gonna give it 24 inches. That's long, 24 to 30 inches. And then I'm gonna put a bed right in the center. So I have my bed on the right side, my circular bed, so it softens that edge in the center and my pots on the left. And then the lilac will provide color as well as the tree that I have on the top. It will also provide nice color. Now everything is completed. I have accounted for what is existing, my views that I think are so important, and my layout is done. So I wanna see your layout. Go ahead and take a stab at it and let me know how it goes. This is my tiny garden when I first moved into this home. I don't have a lot of space, but you'll be amazed how much you can do with the existing space that you have. I have been able to grow a bunch of food to harvest and a lot of flowers that I really enjoy. One of the things that you have to consider is existing conditions. So you may have to call the power company and just get it surveyed and see if there's any wires. I had, didn't have to deal with all the electricity, all of that. There's this, a new subdivision, so I didn't have to worry about that. But I did have a big drainage piece right on the corner of my yard. But what can you do? You can start incorporating some of those elements into the design. Let me show you what I did also on that too. When I build a retaining wall, I make sure to build right above that drainage piece by adding some rocks underneath. I ended up incorporating the rocks as part of the styling of that wall and part of the styling of the drainage. I have some of the larger stones and then I did some flat stones so that it would transition smoothly from the rocks to the steps. One of the things I love is going to the beach on the coast here and there have so many rocks and wood pieces throughout the beach wood. So try to find something that really brings you back to a great memory and rocks are it for me. You can see I added them at the edge of the garden beds also. One of the other components that I had to consider was sound. It makes such an impact when it comes to sound, what I see, what I smell, what I hear, all of that is just super critical to my well-being. And I wanted this garden area to be next to my pond so that I could hear it every time that I came to hang out, especially if I was going to sit on the retaining wall that I created as a cozy space to journal. When you're planning, you're going to have to look at the space you have and what you want to grow. And it is hard sometimes because I don't want to give up my flowers for vegetables, but I don't want to give up my vegetables for flowers. <laughs> so I'm going to compromise and try to find a good balance. Some of the examples is I grow flowers that are edible flowers. It helps me to be able to have tea from the flowers, but also use them for I'm making pestos or use those flowers for garnishing my salads or even use some of those plants for pest control. So I incorporated that as part of my garden beds. But the other thing is I created a space that was just for flowers. I want to be able to get pollinators in here, not only because they're critical to growing vegetables, but because it makes me happy. So I get tons of birds now that I used to never get before. I used to get some birds, but not that many. As the garden grows and every corner is planned, everything will change. The way you feel will change because nature just becomes part of the everyday for you. I knew I wanted to create not only grow vegetables and flowers, but also have a sitting area, a little nook to sit down 
go through my harvest or sit down and journal. So I created a little retaining wall that would also work as a bench. It's super cozy and that's something that details like that make a big difference in the space. Think outside of just gardening. What do you want from the space? Taking the time to relax in the garden is just as important as all the work that you put in it. I spend so much time in the office that when I go into the garden, I want to go back from gardening, but also relaxing, coming up with ideas and just getting my creative thinking going. If you have a hard time thinking of how do I start even going through what I need or want for my garden, I have a free garden planner on my website. I will put a link below and it starts with making you think of you what you need and the process so that you don't become overwhelmed. And then my favorite part is the decorating part. After all the hard work, oh my gosh, it took a little bit of effort to get this done. My brother and my husband, they both helped me so much, but I think my back hurt for quite a while. So after it's all done, doing the decorative touches, that's my favorite stuff. So you can look at everything. You can look at pieces of wood, you can use uh, watering cans, you can use stones, you can use pots. There's so many things that can be considered when you are doing this. Decorating the space, finishing it up is actually that extra layer of goodness. So adding pots for a cozy feel again is important to me. You can look for opportunities of creating edges again with stones like I show you when you do pots add those stones so that it doesn't look so cold but you can get different types of pots or contemporary classic you know something to warm up the space so I have this steel fire pit that I don't use anymore I use it as a, a pot right in my bed add accessories like watering cans that have some color if you like and just helps transition. I love using trellises to grow my vegetables and even antique bar stools as tables. And you know about baskets. I'm like obsessed with baskets and hats. A huge layer to think about is lighting of solar lighting is need i say more solar lighting has come a really long way so you should take a look at what is available out there the scale of the lights available are so good now that they provide quite a bit of light to your garden i love highlighting my pots or my vegetables in my raised garden beds i think you can use them in all sorts of ways so I will go ahead and include some of the Amazon links below for some of the fixtures that I used in my own garden. I hope this video really inspired you to get going on your garden. If you enjoyed the video and learned something, please give it a thumbs up to support the channel.